just a note that pre-diabetic, diabetic, insulin resistant, hyperinsulinemia, insulin resistant syndrome, syndrome X, cardiometabolic syndrome, I could go on all day. All of those things mean the same thing. There's papers using them all, and it's like there's all of this crazy different stuff going on. It's a lie. It's all diabetes type 2. So just so you know, one way to confuse everyone is to call it different things. And all talking pompously from papers with different names and everything is, you know, you have to be an expert to know this. It's all nonsense. It's all diabetes. It's all diabetes. Quickly, public health collaboration wraps up all of the studies on weight loss in one go. Great guys, you know, phc.co.uk. And essentially, low carbon studies beat low fat 36 to 0 in 36 of the main good studies. So that's the ones that are statistically significant. It was 58 to 7 when it wasn't significant, the result. So you can't really say it. But the ones where the result came up as statistically significant, and you can stand over it, low carb beat low fat, 36 to 0. So when you hear, oh, low carb is not good, and oh, low carb is a fad, 36 to 0 in the published literature. But industry has to push low fat. They just have to. Because the whole cholesterol business and the whole processed food business is utterly dependent on low fat. There's no going back. And that's why you hear everyone talking nonsense. Uh, so low carb wins every time, just every time. Feynman, a pal of mine, New York professor, he's great. I love this, uh, he showed. He said the best statistical test, and he's an expert in statistics, but he said it's the eyeball test. Because when you do advanced statistics, and I've seen this a million times, you can use it to basically obfuscate and actually create a fraudulent conclusion. I see it all the time. You just do enough statistical manipulation and p-hacking and selection, and you can actually get your funder's desired outcome, uh, even when it's not true. They all do it. So he said, just, just use your eyeball, guys. And basically, disease has gone through the roof. That's diabetes in the last 40 odd years while red meat consumption per person has been coming down. So any engineer would know, and presumably uh, lay people as well, if something's coming down over 50 years and your disease is going through the roof, the only thing you know is it's not that thing, okay? You know, if, if that thing, red meat, was going up, you could say it might be the meat, but it might not. But when the meat's been coming down while that's been going up, you know the red meat has no part in modern chronic disease. And the actual fact is, it's, it's a superfood because it brings so many nutrients and it brings so few carbs or vegetable oils. So meat is a superfood. Whatever you think about you know, animal welfare and all, it's a separate issue. Meat is a superfood for homo sapiens. The only reason homo sapiens are here or we're in this room is because the hominids began to scavenge and eat meat. And they traded off their large guts, digestive uh, freedom. They traded it off for a big brain. So the gut got small because they were eating all these nutrient-dense foods, and the brain was allowed to expand. And then the hunting developed the brain a lot as well because you had the whole natural evolution that the successful hunters, the fastest, the cleverest, tended to be more successful. We ended up here in this room. But now we can choose to not eat meat if we do a careful diet. But to get here, it's, it's just an important point that's accepted in paleoanthropology across the board. So there you go. So that's the meat scam. And the problem, of course, is what went up over the 50 years is what I told you. Sugar, refined grains, and industrial vegetables. It's not rocket science. 